have more than 900 dam structures, which is like 740 dams, but, but there's a lot of other little ancillary structures associated with it. We have more than 15,000 miles of levees. Kind of want to highlight a little bit about what's uh, what's going on with our dams and levees. I would suggest you, you look at the population at risk. So dams protect about 13 million people and protect about a trillion dollars worth of property. Levees, on the other hand, protect about nine and a half million people, but about 1.3 trillion dollars in property. So really, they protect a lot of people and a lot of infrastructure in the United States. And we're leading uh, the decision here to share risk information and inundation maps with the public so that the public can be more informed uh, and we believe a more informed public will make better decisions. For this diagonal segment, segment two, uh, the 2011 document argued that society expects mass casualty events to occur at a lower rate than limited casualty events, and that's entirely reasonable. Uh, the problem with attempting to support that threshold value, uh, which is essentially one in a thousand fatalities per year, based on what U.S. and other societies may be willing to live with, is that society doesn't really care until after the dam fails. So this is something that we've asked our districts to focus on, putting these kinds of descriptions into plain language so that people can understand the risk that they're living with that they're accepting every day. And so the updated rationale for, uh, or our supplemental rationale for segment one is based on the idea that our, uh, the operation of our dams should not result in a significant impact uh, on the average background risk of death for the most exposed downstream person. Basically, all the federal agencies have decided to approach looking at risks and how we calculate risks, how we portray risks in this case, in a similar fashion. So there might be some differences between these charts, but they're essentially the same. So these are all areas that we had identified that need to be modified to um, to uh, reduce those risks and, and be able to withstand um, an earthquake if it um, comes through. So. So looking closely at this flood that occurred, it was not that extreme a rainfall. It was about a 25 to 50 year event. However, it resulted in about a 100 to 200 year runoff. Early on, um, probably somewhere around 2016, we had some flood, uh, flood events in around the Charleston, West Virginia area. The original design was for 53,000 CFS peak discharge. Our new PMF is a total of 505,000 CFS. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. We are now requiring these comprehensive reviews uh, more in line with what's done at the at the Bureau and the Corps um, as far as doing the deep dive every every other part 12 cycle so on a 10-year basis. So this is just a typical section over the fault zone. This is um, its maximum thickness is essentially over a 600 foot wide zone of the fault. Um, we've designed the auxiliary dam and now constructed that. Um, this, this feature is done in this reach um, to have a 14-foot thick um, filter in the vertical direction as well as the companion. The dam itself is about at 2,500 feet. And then you can see on the, the graphic here that the inundation area for the town of Lake Isabella immediately downstream of the dams. So what is this rapid inundation mapping tool? So um, it's statically created map layers. So think of it as you've already got a hydraulic model. You go through and you run various flow rates. All right. And then um, if you are if you wanted to see depth grids, we have a button right here where you can and click and, and say load depth. But I would definitely say that for the main dam, the big piece of it was just uh, the real estate that we had to work with. If we ever ran into a small issue, the contractor could typically continue working uh, just by moving east or west of that area that we needed to address. So as we start talking about a, a, a national standard for levees, the first option is we could just do a traditional approach, right? Where we have a single or multiple design level. And part of the challenge we've had as a nation is that um, the NFIP has put out the 100 year um, 